Assalamualaikum khawatin hazrat. Wasim Asin welcomes you to lecture number 31 of Marketing for Nonprofits MKT 728 at the Virtual University of Pakistan. The component of learning is going to be the donor market. We have to look at uh, different kinds of donors who make their contribution toward uh, nonprofit organizations. We know very well by now that uh, there are two different sources of uh, generating funds for nonprofits. And the one of them is donor uh, contributions. And uh, the other one is um, revenue that the nonprofit organizations generate through their own products and services. Back to the donors. We have four different uh, kinds of donors, starting with foundations, corporations, governments, I mean, governmental agencies, and individuals. They all make uh, financial contributions in different forms, but the, but the bottom line is they give money, they do funding for uh, nonprofit organizations. They have uh, their own objectives, whereas nonprofits have theirs. And uh, as long as uh, there's a match between the two, uh, the funding uh, exercise gets completed and uh, the funds start flowing uh, toward the way of nonprofits. But uh, having said that, it doesn't mean that the process is that simple. As a matter of fact, it is quite elaborate and uh, there are certain ways and means followed by donors uh, before they commit um, grants or financial aid to uh, the nonprofit organizations they are dealing with. So therefore, uh, we can say that this particular part of the component is uh, all about understanding the institutional and uh, behavioral character of different donors and the characteristics that form funding are uh, the ones that uh, are to be looked at uh, individually the one by one. Let us start uh, talking about foundations. Uh, there are different kinds of uh, foundations and I think you know, there has been a mention of foundations in the very formative uh, part of the course. But just in order to bring the whole thing into a sharp focus, let me tell you that there are three or four different kinds of foundations. We have independent foundations, then we have family foundations, we have the corporate foundations, and then we have community foundations. The commonality between and among all these foundations is that they all do funding. Um, they have their own objectives, whereas nonprofit organizations can have theirs. And uh, these uh, uh, grant makers can look at uh, the uh, situation in which a nonprofit organization is uh, involved and then uh, they try to establish whether or not they're going to be in a position to give funds to a particular grant seeker. Independent foundations are the ones that are anywhere from being very small to being very large. And uh, they, they do funding on a certain uh, uh, basis, uh, which uh, again uh, is uh, something that revolves around a certain purpose. So in other words, if an independent foundation is all about uh, making uh, donations toward uh, health costs, uh, of course, this foundation is going to uh, dish out money toward those profit, uh, non-profit organizations that are involved uh, in that particular field. Family foundations uh, basically are outgrowth or rather an offshoot of independent foundations. And uh, I would say that family foundations uh, could be informal and they could also be uh, formal. But then again, they also 
are based on look at the certain special purpose and look at the based on that purpose they dish out funds then we have uh, the corporate foundations that are uh, basically part of the big corporations we know that uh, corporations could have been uh, involved uh, into charity giving uh, over the last uh, so many uh, decades or maybe could be you know the more than decades and uh, they that have been um, making their contribution uh, out of their uh, income uh, depending on uh, the way they look at uh, that particular portion of income they have to uh, give out it could be income uh, before tax or uh, you know gross income or whatever is the basis the fact remains that uh, they are committed to give a certain uh, portion of their income toward a certain cause and in order to implement that they create foundations on their behalf and those foundations give money to non-profit organizations then we have community foundations community foundations as the terminology suggests are based in the communities and the interesting part of the whole thing is that community foundations get their funding from individuals from the corporate foundations and they may also get the funding from governmental agencies depending on the kind of cause or social program they are working on. The basic objective of all the foundations is common and that is to bring about an improvement in the social setup. Depending on the cause they're working on, they are all out to do something good in social terms. And therefore, they have to pinpoint the kind of area they are really interested in. That area, as I pointed out, and as we all know by now, we are quite very experts, I think, in this particular uh, context, that uh, we may look at education or health services, human services, um, environment, and so on and so forth. But we have different kinds of non-profit organizations working in those particular areas. And therefore, it is uh, uh, some kind of uh, the basis that uh, defines the character of uh, the uh, grant giver, with the meaning that forms the foundation or the inter institutional foundation of uh, the one particular uh, grant giver, and then uh, it further defines its characteristics. But what is important here is that any grant giver or any foundation for that matter looks upon the investment it makes in terms of time and money, wants to have a return on that. Now, this is an extremely interesting dimension of nonprofit organizations or the foundations as they are related with nonprofits. Because as we look at the commercial activity, we know that the commercial organizations are out to generate certain returns, certain financial returns for which you know, we know the benchmarks. And those are common among all corporations, big or small, all over the world. However, foundations that are helping nonprofit organizations can have a different scale or have different benchmarks in order to determine the kind of returns they are looking for. And as we know that the nonprofit organizations are mission driven, they basically are concerned about fulfilling the mission and profitability, therefore, is a secondary objective. Likewise, Foundations that exist to support financially those nonprofit organizations could also could have a similar philosophy. So, in other words, the impact which they think is going to be created by the investments they make also has to be in terms of fulfillment of mission on part of the nonprofit organizations. So, this is what I said is the most interesting dimension of the relationship because here. Um, the uh, grant givers could have to look at uh, the needs assessment uh, dimension of uh, uh, the area that they are operating in, or for that matter, the nonprofit organization is operating in. In other words, if we pick the one area, say in healthcare, the situation that surrounds the circumstances of uh, that particular nonprofit organization, that is the grant seeker has to be assessed, thoroughly assessed in all different terms by the grant giver. After the 
Potential grant giver has uh, scanned the environment and uh, has carried out uh, the needs assessment. They move ahead with the whole thing in a very strategic way. They have multidisciplinary teams consisting of uh, the different experts in the area of marketing, uh, the finance, uh, the operations, uh, the IT, and so on and so forth, uh, who uh, look at uh, the whole thing in terms of formulating their own strategies. Now, don't forget that they also happen to be an organization and they have own um, strategic intent and their own capabilities, their own mission, and therefore their own objectives and goals. And in order to see that uh, the uh, grant seeker okay, is going to be in line with uh, their strategic uh, uh, the formulations, they carry out that analysis okay, by okay, putting down their heads and come up with uh, a complete uh, strategic plan. This uh, strategic plan is a combination of different strategies like uh, the, any uh, the nonprofit organization or for that matter, a commercial organization will have uh, when they are out to implement a certain program. So in other words, it is kind of uh, a campaign planning, which uh, basically is an offshoot of the overall business plan in which they have different kinds of strategies and they ensure that the strategies that they have uh, put in place are going to have a complete match with the strategic moves of the nonprofit organization that is seeking uh, the funds. So in other words, uh, once they have uh, this uh, strategic plan, uh, which is uh, the campaign planning, they translate uh, all that into action plans. And uh, the, those action plans are a combination of uh, the different actions that uh, the a grant giver kind of has to undertake in terms of their marketing effort, in terms of kind of seeing uh, the kind of uh, regulations that govern that particular area in which that nonprofit organization is operating. And for example, if the organization is also interacting with the, with the government, then uh, all the more reason kind of for uh, the uh, grant giver to look at uh, kind of those interactions, relationships, and the ability of the organization uh, to stay within those regulations and uh, to carry out their uh, the marketing programs. So in other words, uh, the foundations could have their action plans in place, uh, which are a translation of their uh, strategic plan. And uh, the further uh, the sophistication of these uh, the action plans is uh, the monitoring and control. So in other words, if the foundation has taken the decision to dish out funds uh, toward a certain nonprofit, then they would like to with the monitor with the, what's going on uh, as part of the implementation program of that particular nonprofit that uh, has sought funds uh, from the grant giver. So uh, it is a, a comprehensive exercise in which uh, the foundations are uh, thoroughly involved and they cannot involve themselves unless they also happen to be professional organizations. And this happens uh, the more so in terms of uh, the multinational uh, nonprofit organizations and uh, foundations that uh, give funds to such uh, the nonprofits. Now, this is not to say that um, foundations that uh, operate um, at national level or regional level or even local level uh, should not be the ones to get into this kind of exercise. The fact remains that uh, the, the more organized they are in terms of their professional expertise, uh, by having multidisciplinary teams that can look into the actual needs of uh, the uh, nonprofits, the better off they are in terms of uh, making sure that the funds that they give will have an impact and they will uh, bring the grant giver a good return on their investment. And as you know very well, the return here is not the, the financial uh, ratios, but rather returns are ability of the nonprofit organization to implement its program and to fulfill its the mission. So therefore, we can say that there has to be a match between the mission of the grant giver and the, the mission and objectives of the grant seeker. So in other words, we can yet again say that the basic objective of nonprofit organizations is to make sure that there is a match between their objectives and goals and the objectives and goals of the grant giver. In other words, they've got to see to it there is no mission drift and they do not really move away from the course which they already have charted. Just in order to be um, able 
to get some funds only because the funds are available for a certain program, they should not be moving away from the basic missions. In other words, they should not be laying their hands on something that happens to be a little away from their core mission. That is the basic objective of any fund-seeking organization. Now, here the question is, how do they move ahead for seeking those funds? Uh, the whole process starts with uh, a very small uh, kind of a note that uh, they send uh, toward the grant giver um, expressing their interest. And that happens uh, in response to the advertisements uh, which uh, appear in uh, newspapers, uh, which uh, are posted on websites and so on and so forth. But the point here is that nonprofits, while they apply for uh, the funds, do not really send detailed proposals at that particular moment. And the process gets kicked off with the help of small, simple, and straightforward letter expressing their interest. It is only after different proposals, meaning preliminary proposals given by different grant seekers that have been scanned and uh, sifted uh, by the grant givers that uh, the stage for uh, uh, preparing a detailed proposal uh, presents itself. So in other words, once the foundation has gotten back to the nonprofit organization, giving their uh, preliminary uh, expression of interest uh, to work with that uh, nonprofit, only then the nonprofit should move ahead with a detailed proposal. And we all know that the making a proposal is uh, an art in itself. Nonprofits they have to have the people who are expert in preparing proposals because proposals entail a few very important strategic dimensions that cover all those areas that should evoke the grant giver's interest. And in order for the nonprofit to evoke that interest, they have to talk about things like a very clear introduction of the organization and the project which they are going to undertake meaning for which the, the grant is available. And they then they should talk about that project in detail by describing its salient features, the, the uniqueness of that particular project or, or the program. And they should also talk about the impact that that program will have on the society. In the area, the nonprofit and the grant giver are interested in, the meaning for which there is a joint level of interest. The proposal should also talk about the budgetary requirements for the project. So in other words, the organization has to carry out a detailed financial analysis. This proposal may carry as a part of its annexes salient numbers which um, represent the, the overall financial working. So in other words, this may not carry detailed the working which uh, you know, may remain with the uh, grant seeker, but giving the macro numbers reflect the detailed working that the organization has carried out. So in other words, they just cannot talk, the talk about um, the numbers in terms of uh, what is going to be the profit and loss situation, what is going to be the break-even point, and uh, they also going to have to talk about the, the balance sheet, and uh, all the, the working has to reflect you know, how much is going to be um, generated by the organization, meaning the nonprofit itself, and what is the gap, and what is the match between that particular gap and the grant that is available. That is an important thing where the nonprofit organization has to arrive at. And uh, with that uh, the working, the nonprofit also has to talk about the personnel who are going to be involved to carry out that particular project. Now, having talked about uh, all these uh, the four important factors, meaning the introduction, the description of the project, and the budgetary requirements, and then the, the people who are going to be the part of the team the organization um, exposes itself uh, very positively uh, before the grant uh, giver uh, who uh, can 
assess the situation of the nonprofit organization very objectively. The proposal maker has to be very transparent in putting up the proposal and all the dimensions have to be taken into consideration from the strategic standpoint of not just the the nonprofit organization, but also that of uh, the foundation. So in other words, the proposal maker or makers could have to be sensitive to their perspective. And all those factors that I talked about earlier are gonna have to be taken into consideration because the proposal makers can must understand that uh, the assessors will have their own benchmarks. And uh, as long as they are aware of those benchmarks and as long as they come up with something which is transparent, uh, they can put together a good and effective proposal. Now, how can they be very transparent? Well, to begin with, they have to be very honest with the mission of their own organizations. In other words, they must not drift from the core mission only because the grant happens to be for something which is you know, a few inches apart from that core mission. So that should not happen in the first place and to begin with. Then they have to be very objective and accurate in terms of generating the numbers. And then they also have to be extremely careful with a very well put together SWOT analysis. While they talk about their strengths and weaknesses, they must talk about to see the opportunities and also the threats. And as long as they are very honest about that, the foundation will have a very good basis of assessing the overall situation. So in other words, if the proposal is not transparent or is perceived by the grant giver as less than transparent or not transparent at all, to be very blunt, then the proposal is not really going to make a headway. So it is very important for the nonprofit organization to come up with a transparent and an objective proposal with which has been put together by taking into consideration the strategic perspective of their organization as well as that of the foundation. They must realize that this basically is a campaign the marketing planning. And this the market plan has to reflect that the organization happens to be consumer driven and it is consumer of a that matter customer centered. This does take us back to the one of the formative components of the course. And we know that nonprofit organizations that happen to be customer driven are more successful organizations. And if we believe in the concept and the philosophy that nonprofit marketing stands at a very competitive juncture, uh, which we keep seeing and uh, keep proving from time to time, then we must uh, follow the whole thing as a very strategic, um, well-crafted and put together with the marketing uh, planning process. The customer-centeredness is something which also happens to be the focus of the foundation because don't forget, Foundation exists for improvement of uh, certain aspects uh, of the society uh, for which they have uh, created their existence. Uh, it is their reason for being. And uh, if the nonprofit also happens to be customer driven and it talks about the same customer for which the uh, grant giver uh, exists and is willing to consider the nonprofit's um, proposal. Uh, then nonprofit is doing something which is very much in line with the objectives of the grant giver. So that is the crux of uh, the whole of the matter. Now the thing is, once the, the proposal has gone to the foundation, what are the other factors they really like to pinpoint and look into very incisively? Uh, those are uh, things like not just the, the financial requirement, I mean, that is a given. And uh, any grant giver, whether that is a foundation or a bank or a development finance institution that may lend huge amount to a multinational corporation, the objective remains the same. But what is going to be the ability and the capability of the borrowing organization, or for that matter, the grant seeker in this particular nonprofit context to implement the program? 
if uh, they are convinced that they have the ability to implement the program, of course, the nonprofit stands very bright chances of uh, seeking funds and getting funds. So the factors that could be summarized as uh, the track record to, to begin with. The grant giver would like to see the track record of uh, the organization because if the organization uh, happens to have uh, some past experience, in uh, the same field or in a similar area, then it stands with very uh, high chances of being very seriously considered. Um, so a track record is something which uh, has to be uh, a part of the overall proposal. Uh, when the organization talks about uh, description of the project uh, by talking uh, um, about things like the uniqueness of uh, its features, it also should talk about the success stories that are attached with its past. Because if it has undertaken similar projects, then it can talk very convincingly about having experience which is required to make this particular program also a success. Since foundations give a heavy weight to the quality of staff members, it is incumbent on the part of the nonprofit to give all the details about the personnel, uh, they should attach their comprehensive resumes. Uh, and uh, if they think uh, they also have uh, consultants uh, who can be attached with the organization uh, while they implement the program, they should not hesitate doing so because uh, not every organization has uh, the right uh, uh, quality of uh, staff in numbers uh, required by the grant giver uh, to be in place uh, to execute the project. And if that is the case, they can also get in touch with consultants who can be uh, hired by the organization uh, toward implementation of the program. Now, if the team of consultants uh, happens to be an experienced team um, in that relevant field, it will leverage the situation of the nonprofit organization and uh, make the case uh, for uh, uh, seeking that particular grant um, leveraged. And the organization uh, will stand chances of uh, going uh, through this particular phase. Another factor that uh, the foundations uh, look at, the spectrum of organization's ability to make the program a success is the monitoring and control mechanism that the nonprofit organization has in place while they go through the implementation process. So in other words, it has to be a part of the, uh, the proposal as to how they intend uh, monitoring uh, and controlling uh, the various stages of the program because that will uh, show the foundation uh, their ability to create the kind of impact on foundation's investment with which they will make into the non-profits in the program. So this particular ability is also very important. Now, one more point which the non-profits have to keep in mind, and the fact is in most of the cases they do, and they are practically aware of this particular factor more than you and I, is the importance of relationship marketing. This again takes us back to one of the formative components of relationship marketing in which we learned that nonprofit organizations could have to cultivate the different donors and the different stakeholders. So by that particular token, they have to cultivate the foundations. And as a matter of fact, what happens is that once they have cultivated that relationship, they are in touch with the foundation all the time. And like I said, foundations are special purpose foundations. If a foundation uh, happens to be working in the area of education and it is dealing with a university, um, the university has to be in touch with the foundation all the time, keeping um, them informed of all the developments that are happening within the university and around the university in terms of the total uh, the academic environment so that uh, they can uh, elevate the confidence of the foundation from which they keep getting grants, that they are um, fully abreast of uh, all the developments and they are in a position to uh, undertake any new program. And uh, the foundations uh, also uh, do not really have to 
uh, could they be uh, apprehensive about the, the ability of uh, their uh, client, could they, so to say, could they, because uh, the grant seeker uh, has uh, a history of relationship with that particular foundation. So these are uh, the important uh, the factors that uh, the nonprofits could have to keep uh, in uh, consideration while they deal with uh, foundations uh, toward getting grants. The next category is uh, the corporations. And uh, like I said, uh, corporations uh, always uh, set aside with a certain portion of uh, their uh, gross income, uh, which they think you know, should be uh, given as charity to uh, nonprofit organizations. But the fact is, things have changed and are changing fast. Why and how things have changed? Let me explain that to you. We know that uh, corporate philanthropy has been in vogue uh, since a very long time and uh, corporations could have been making their contribution always. But now things have changed because the environment for the corporations have become very competitive. And because of that competitiveness, corporations are becoming leaner and leaner, which means they are under tremendous competitive pressures. Now, this is not to say that they have stopped giving money. As a matter of fact, you know, they have become quite very aggressive in uh, developing relationships with nonprofit organizations for the reasons that we all know, uh, but uh, the fact remains that uh, they are quite very selective and choosy in terms of which cause to address. And they look at the whole thing as very strategic and therefore we can call it not corporate philanthropy, rather strategic philanthropy. And uh, there are uh, certain dimensions to this uh, strategic philanthropy that uh, really govern uh, this um, uh, donation giving or donation making. And uh, we have to look at all those dimensions uh, one by one. And toward that, uh, we have two different perspectives. Uh, one is the perspective of uh, the corporation and the other is the perspective of the nonprofit organization. Just like uh, we uh, learned uh, things um, about uh, these two uh, stakeholders, meaning the nonprofit organization and the foundations in terms of uh, the developing a relationship and then um, buttoning up the uh, transaction, which is uh, you know, getting money and which is giving money by the grant giver. Likewise, uh, the relationship uh, between a corporation and a nonprofit organization is uh, executed on the basis of certain dimensions, which are very strategic to the both of them. And let's uh, look at those uh, one by one. The corporation always likes to uh, look at the image factor. To what extent it uh, has the opportunity of improving its image among the public at large, and to what extent it is going to increase its sales. Naturally, if the public has a very good image of the organization as a good corporate citizen, they would like to patronize their products and uh, would like to buy them more and more and uh, in turn, the corporation uh, benefits from those increased sales in so many different ways which are very obvious to all of you and I. Then the corporation uh, may also look into things like to what extent uh, the relationship is going to bring to the corporation good employees in the future and uh, more customers in the future. So if we summarize the whole thing, there are uh, the three important factors. Number one is the image, number two is increased sales, and number three is uh, more customers. And more customers and sales are intertwined. And uh, these are the dimensions that uh, the corporations are always concerned about. And if they uh, play their uh, strategic part uh, carefully uh, by having a very well put together strategic plan, they certainly are in a position to uh, establish that they happen to be good corporate citizens. And that is what we all know is the objective that uh, the many corporations in today's world are after. The dimensions that nonprofit organizations are gonna have uh, gonna on their side to be considered are proximity in terms of geography between the nonprofit organization and uh, the corporation. If the corporation and the nonprofit organization could happen to be in the same area, 
uh, it is uh, a kind of a natural uh, inclination on the part of the both of them to develop a relationship. Um, this uh, does going to happen in so many different cases. The other thing is similarity and a close link between their uh, operations. For example, a hospital uh, has uh, a natural tendency to uh, join hands uh, with a uh, pharmaceutical corporations, meaning thereby, if a pharmaceutical corporation happens to have a foundation that helps nonprofit organizations, then a nonprofit hospital becomes a natural choice of that particular foundation. Then there are uh, the factors of natural relationships uh, which can be cited with the help of uh, a couple of more examples. Let me talk about a nonprofit organization that is helping the tobacco farming community in the tobacco growing area of the country. Obviously, uh, this happens to be a remote area, and uh, the natural choice uh, of the nonprofit organization uh, should be cigarette companies that uh, are uh, connected with that particular area. Uh, since uh, cigarette companies could happen to be corporate giants in most of the cases, then they become natural candidates could for this kind of a relationship between the nonprofit organization and the corporate foundation. Another example could be a relationship between a university uh, which happens to be specializing in engineering with an engineering corporation because they are producing graduates who are engineers there is a natural kind of a linkage between the university and uh, that particular engineering corporation or a combination of different engineering corporations. And then we have uh, the similarities of uh, the operations that uh, may also become and can become the basis of this kind of a relationship whereby nonprofit organizations seek funds from corporate foundations. Well, we can develop a relationship between a corporate entity that is a huge brand company having a very extensive distribution network and a nonprofit organization that also happens to distribute products through those distributors. So they can join hands by way of the corporate foundation, not giving the nonprofit aid in money form. But in kind, because they can help the nonprofit organization distribute its products with the help of the logistics and distribution network with which they have in place for their products. So, if you come to think of it, I think this could be a huge relationship with which may eventually take the form of the cost marketing and so on and so forth. But the fact remains that uh, there are uh, the different uh, the bases of uh, non-profit organizations uh, finding those corporate foundations that can uh, develop uh, a relationship of funding with uh, the non-profits. And uh, to summarize, uh, you know, there are a few. The one is there is a natural relationship. The other one is uh, there is a similarity of operations. Yet another one is that uh, they are uh, connected uh, by geography. And yet another one is that uh, they have uh, a very close link in uh, terms of um, their respective fields, um, pharmaceuticals and hospital and uh, uh, an engineering school and an engineering corporation. Let us now gonna move on to the next classification, which is government. Governments or their agencies also give funding to different nonprofit organizations. Again, the basis is the area which the government has picked up as the one they are interested in. So the match between the NPO and the governmental agency is something that does not really need any further elaboration. But what is a little different here is from foundations and corporate foundations and corporations, so to say, is the fact that uh, the nonprofits could have to carry out a lot of paperwork when it comes to getting money from governmental agencies. The enormity of uh, such paperwork stems basically from the fact that uh, there are uh, governmental regulations uh, and public policy issues that uh, have to be uh, kept in a 
with a very proper perspective and uh, there are certain uh, guidelines that uh, have to be followed. And uh, unless uh, those are followed in letter and spirit, step by step, uh, like I was talking about uh, request for proposals and the steps that uh, the nonprofits have to undertake in order to make the whole thing very transparent uh, and comprehensive, uh, the dealing with a governmental agency becomes a long-drawn process. That is uh, one of the major differences. Another difference is that uh, for a newcomer, it becomes uh, a little more difficult to get those funds because they're competing against those organizations that already are experienced in dealing with the government and uh, having worked on other projects for which they got funding in the past and they are better prepared to come up with the kind of paperwork and make a presentation of facts and figures along with their experiential background that may outcompete those who have not been into that particular arena in the past. So much for the governments and we now move on to the next classification which is individuals. The fact of the matter is that individuals could happen to be the largest component of givers among all the donors. It is very interesting that the not corporations, the not foundations, and not governments give as much money as individuals do. And this happens to be the case all over the world. Why individuals give, we know that. I think we already have looked into the certain factors that were taken up in relation to the segmentation exercise uh, during which I explained in detail uh, people have uh, the different kinds of motives before they start considering why to donate and how to donate and when to donate. So the motivational factors are uh, behind the donation making and uh, it is upon the nonprofit organization to be able to understand all those good motivations and NPOs can understand those motivations with the help of the marketing research process, whereby they carry out research to establish why people donate. Even those who have been regular donors toward that particular cause also have to be maintained and toward that maintenance, uh, rather maintenance stage, the organizations have to ensure that what is it to see that is going to keep them glued or bonded with the organization is a part of the marketing research process. Of course, there are uh, some informal uh, ways and means uh, whereby uh, you develop relationships with your donors and uh, you start understanding those donors uh, inside out. Um, but the fact again remains that uh, the individual donors can uh, be so many and uh, for um, causes that are uh, huge and well publicized you do not uh, know all the individual donors because they are uh, uh, all over the country and uh, their existence uh, across such a, a geographical uh, spectrum uh, doesn't really make it possible for uh, the organization to know all of them individually and personally. And therefore, uh, you have to uh, take a representative sample, carry out marketing research, and be prepared with uh, all the information and data as to why people donate toward different causes or toward a particular cause. Um, I will, for your benefit, recount all those things that I have talked earlier also, but this is going to be in this particular context of classification of donors. To begin with, we know that there are a couple of classifications of the donors in terms of their age brackets. Okay, the people who happen to be between their 30s and 50s are the ones who may be regular donors, but they're not big donors because they have other responsibilities in life, like their kids, their education, and so on and so forth. Then you see that we have people in the middle ages, so to say, between 50 and uh, say, you know, mid 60s or 70s. Here, okay, you are going to find people who are uh, the big donors or bigger donors okay, because okay, they have fulfilled the most of their responsibilities and are now in a position to donate more than what they've been donating in the past. And then we have a classification of those donors who are in the old age. 
the number is not all that great, but donations could be huge. So you have to be careful in terms of developing personal relationships with such donors who could be uh, few and not many. Uh, you know their um, personalities, you have their profiles, uh, different uh, the motivating factors, and rather again, you, by dealing with them year in and year out, have zeroed in their um, motivational factors that uh, really actuate them to come forward and uh, give money to your organization. And therefore, you have to uh, deal with them as uh, part of the maintenance stage, uh, whereas, whereby uh, you can maintain them as uh, your regular donors, uh, just like a commercial organization likes to uh, maintain its loyal customers. So, so much for uh, the uh, the summary of uh, the, the the kinds of uh, donors. Now, the the motivational factors uh, we know that uh, the people donate uh, because they really believe in that particular cause. They donate uh, because they know someone uh, who's been part of uh, that particular program. Maybe it was a health program or an education program or a social improvement program. The person or persons they know uh, they may have been the clients of the nonprofit or maybe you know other stakeholders who have been helping that nonprofit toward implementation of the program but they have heard good things and they believe in that program and they donate some people donate because they believe in humanity and the thing people can have got to be helped and they donate some are very god fearing and they fear if they do not donate toward the cause of the hospital they may be afflicted with similar disease or ailment, and therefore they should donate, and they do donate. And then there are people who believe in self-esteem, whether they do it for publicity or they want to hide that the publicity factor. The inner psychology of those people work in a way that they do feel important and bigger in terms of being privileged. Even when they say, well, it is by the grace of God, um, you know, they still uh, feel privileged because God has chosen them to uh, give money toward a noble cause. So there are there's so many different uh, motivational factors that uh, make people uh, donate to the, toward a certain cause. And those are the factors that uh, organizations have to keep in mind. Now, here, one thing that has to be repeated, but of course in different words, why is it that uh, they have to understand these motives behind uh, donation making? Well, they must realize that um, donors, just like corporations, do not donate as just charity. They donate because in return, they're looking for a benefit. If you go back to the model of uh, cost benefit, you will realize that the benefit these donors are looking for is the inner satisfaction. The motives, the maybe self-esteem and the factor of okay, the being God-fearing and so on and so forth. But the fact remains that the benefit that they get out of uh, donating money is that they do have a level of satisfaction by giving that money. And therefore, it is this transaction, I will say, that uh, the marketing people within nonprofits could have to uh, keep in mind that uh, it is the benefit which uh, is going to be derived by the donors by making donations. And uh, the cost that they give toward getting that benefit is the money. So. The return on investment, just like I talked about in terms of um, the, the, the corporate foundations or corporations, applies very well to individuals as well. And since individuals could happen to be the uh, largest component of all donors, because there are so many, we have to uh, keep in mind this particular factor of the benefit which they look for as paramount.